and welcome back to Everyday Fitness. Um, if you like the videos I'm putting out, if you found them helpful, please do subscribe, uh, drop a like and drop a comment. Today we are going to be going through three things I wish I knew before starting. So Liam went through a similar video yesterday, he went through his three main points that he wished he knew before starting on his goal. And I'm going to do the same thing now, basically to, to hopefully identify things for you guys if you're starting out or even if you're currently going through your, your journey or your goal that we wish we knew in case you're making similar mistakes, in case you're seeing similar things pop up, to basically help you, help you as best we can. Now number one for me, and I'm going to view this from my goal which was more gaining weight, was this whole idea of healthy eating and how that actually led me to find hitting my calorie targets, consuming the food that I needed for my goal, which was putting on weight, so being in a calorie surplus, a lot harder, and actually almost sort of created a, a poor relationship with food. So you'll probably all be familiar with this idea of healthy eating, which can then lead to good food, uh, good food versus bad foods, and, and all this stuff, which from a relationship with food point of view isn't fantastic, but also from an adherence point of view, flexibility point of view, and potentially hitting your targets isn't helpful at all. So yes, we should be making sure we're consuming good quality food. You know, we should be making sure we're consuming good uh, micronutrients. So in terms of health being a priority, for sure, and our eating should um, supplement that and, and be in line with that. However, this whole healthy eating sort of mindset or view towards food quite often demonize a lot of foods, term a lot of foods as bad, and therefore create poor relationships with those foods. And in what's what's actually the case is that if we have a very balanced nutrition, we're including all these foods that are gonna be beneficial for health, you know, it's not gonna be um, dangerous or it's not gonna cause any harm to our health or our goals if we're also including foods that are potentially less nutritious and in in a way it actually might be slightly beneficial for a goal so let me explain from my point of view when trying to put weight on when I was starting out I struggled a lot to get the calories that I needed in I almost thought that you know I was going to be having to eat ridiculous amounts of food to be able to put weight on now for me personally I do have to eat quite a lot but when I started out I was very much behind this thought process of healthy eating you know, if you're trying to get in the calories required to put weight on, especially from my point of view, where it was a lot of food, a lot of calories, if you're trying to get that in solely from foods that are deemed as healthy, so basically whole foods, and you're not having any potentially less nutritious, higher calorie dense foods, lower volume foods, you're going to be struggling. And that was exactly the case for me. And that's because I had this mindset of, I had to be consuming all my food from good foods, which isn't the case. There's no such thing as good foods. And instead, when I started to find a balance, um, and was including other foods, it actually helped me to start hitting my calorie targets. So if you are someone who has been sold this healthy eating, if you're someone who believes and has this mindset towards healthy eating and good food versus bad food, I would massively recommend rethinking that, trying to switch that up, understanding that it's not good foods versus bad foods. It's having a healthy, balanced diet that include, yes, very nutritious foods that are good for our health, but also foods that are potentially less nutritious ones that we perhaps maybe enjoy more, help us with flexibility, adherence, and also might potentially help us with our goal. Point two is that it's probably gonna take longer than you initially think. Now, for me, when I started out, I didn't think I was gonna achieve results that where I wanted to be, but where I am now within sort of like a year, no. However, looking back at it now, where I'm sort of five, six years in, potentially longer than I initially thought at the beginning, but what the issue is that I think a lot of people have with this point is why I'm bringing it up and that I also potentially had when I started out, was that it's very easy when you're looking through social media, when you look for people's highlights, when you look through people's progress, to have this poor image idea of how long it's gonna take. I think it's gonna take a lot shorter time than it actually is because you're comparing it to somebody else. And quite often when you're comparing it to somebody else and their own results, their own progress, a lot of how they got there isn't actually as clear as it might seem. Sometimes it's not shown how long it's actually taken. They're sh sharing very short snippets of what is actually a very, very long, long journey and process. 
especially now when, again, some people aren't the most honest and it's not a topic I'm going to get into a lot, but there might be people who have perhaps used certain supplements, certain means and ways to get the result that you're potentially after and haven't expressed that, haven't shared that with you and therefore you're expecting to get something from a similar timeline to them which just isn't realistic. So very simply you've got to expect it to take time especially if you're looking to gain muscle mass like I was myself. You've got to be willing to put in years, you've got to be willing to be patient, you've got to be willing to put in a lot of time. Point three in a minute is going to come on how to make that time shorter than it potentially needs to be and how to get results as quickly as you possibly can but just have realistic expectations that it's probably going to take longer than what you have in your head right now and finally number three learn just learn as much as you can okay however the way you go about learning is important so when i started out i knew hardly anything okay i'll be honest with that i knew hardly anything if i look back now at my nutrition as i've just explained i look back now at my training you know if i look back now at my sleep stress management all these things terrible you know poor if i compare that to, to to where i am now to then it's terrible now i didn't really start to get hold of things really start to put a plan together really start to optimize things until i went away and actually learned now i don't mean going away and learning just from the internet which might sound a bit hypocritical right now because you're watching this video but what i mean is you need to find someone or maybe a group of people that you can really trust, that put up good information, that have backing behind what they're saying, that have evidence to show what they're saying is true, works. Find that group of people and then truly really learn from them, even from a one-to-one -one basis if you can. The learning that I've gone through has been through seminars, courses, speaking to people one-to-one. -one. And when I've done that, that's when I've learned the most. That's when I've then been able to apply that knowledge I've been able to do all that, that's when I've found the best results, you know. If I look at my course from like six years of sort of um, me training my journey, sort of first one to two years, weren't fantastic. But the most recent three to four, when I've had all that information, that knowledge, and I've been able to apply that, that's when I've seen the most growth, okay. That's when I've seen the most progress. And in reality, you know, when you start training, that's when you should see the best response because that's it's a new stimulus. If I had known... All the stuff that I know now and applied that in the first one to two years, then those one to two years, the progress that I've made would have been huge. If you're in a similar situation where I was, if you're just starting out, or if you're very new, or even if you're not new now and you've been doing it for a while but you're struggling, go away and learn. Learn from an individual, learn from a group of individuals. Like I said, once you find someone, once you find a couple of people and you know you can trust them, you start learning from them, you'll probably find that they then have other people that they look up to, have close relationships with people, then it will start branching out. But what you don't want to do is just find whoever on the internet and learn from them without really researching. Pick loads of different people and just try and put it all together because it's very easy on the internet just to get confused. So much information out there, you just get confused. So if you can, find one, a group of people that you trust, learn from them. If you can one-to-one, -one, learn from them. Coaching, great. If you want to do co um, courses, seminars, if you've got the money, if you're really that interested and really that bothered about your goals, fantastic. The benefit of working one-to-one -one with someone is that they've probably done the courses and the seminars, they've probably learned from others and therefore they're going to pass on to you. But whatever you do, if you're serious about making fantastic progress, you've got to learn. If you look at people's results, you know, this is the, one of the main things that separates people. You know, if you look at the people that are going to get results, the people that get the best progress, they go, they've gone away and they've learned, whether that's you're looking at a coach, an athlete, you know, or someone who has been coached. Those are the people that tend to get the best results. And there's a reason for that. It's because they've gone away and they've learned how to do it. So there are the three things that I wish I knew when I started out, wish I was told when I started out. You know, there's going to be plenty of stuff. I've made a lot of mistakes throughout my journey. There's a lot of stuff that I've learned. So these are only three, three quite big ones for me, but they're only three of many. Okay, so, you know, what could have been number four, which I'm not going to go into now, but just understand also that you're going to make mistakes, and that's fine. But hopefully these have, these have helped. Um, you know, if you've got any questions on, on any of these, if you'd like any more help on, on your goal, on anything else, look out for them. By all means, drop a comment. Uh, please do drop a like as well if you found it helpful, if you liked it. And then again, 
if you want to keep up with the videos that we're putting out, please subscribe.